I don't know that the U.S. is going to be leaving NATO, but maybe, you know, not kicking in so much anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's indisputable that, like, look, here's a, a graph of the defense expenditure a share of GDP among the NATO countries. Way over there on the left, you've got the U.S. and, and recently Greece contributing above the recommended uh 2% of their share of GDP and everyone else, you know, most of the other countries are well below uh, what NATO says they should be kicking in for their own self-defense. In Greece, um, it's all monopoly money anyway. So it's not like it's actually. It yeah, actually unfortunately, the Greek, the, Greek, really give a shit. the Greek contribution is going to be not going to. Yeah. That, not gonna, I mean, it's an interesting story. I'd actually like to read about that, but it's not going to make or break it. And then and the other ones, you not to make you, I don't know if you can go back, but the other ones yeah. are, the, are the UK and the Baltics. So mm -hmm. this, this is what I was talking about in terms of like what, what kind of coalition. Yeah. yeah. So like Lithuania, Poland, Estonia, Latvia, these are the Uber anti-Russia yeah. hawks um, and the UK. Um, so like that's basically it, basically it. And then once you get into the under, like, okay, Croatia, uh, yeah, Balkans were always ambiguous a little bit on Russia, depending if you're, assuming you're not Bosnia, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, France, they're like, you know, always can go either way. Um, you get the point. Yep, exactly. And then this is, you know, showing the, this is just another way to visualize it. The share of the alliance defense expenditure on the right there, the U.S., 70 percent. So, I mean, there's, um, yep. you know, if, if this were to change, what do you think that would mean for the world? Like how, how would what would be some of the major shifts that you would expect to see um because I, I assume it's something you you would like to see. If the U.S. Uh, amends its relationship, or if the U.S. Um, you have, the uh, U.S. says we're first. we're not gonna we're not gonna be covering seventy percent of the bill anymore. Then I think that it won't be as radical as people think. Um, I think that the NATO will be less financed. Um, uh, that other countries will actually step up. I actually do think Trump's sort of, you know, New York mafioso ways on this like are actually pretty effective. Like uh, at least they're more effective than the status quo ante, um, and then I think the, the the major contribution of of NATO is Article Five. So who like will if, who will be stepping up? I presume it's not Latvia, right? Who are the who are the people who can step up? Yeah, I mean we have UK, we have Germany, but like like realistically, how will that gap be made up for? Well, I don't know if the, I don't know if the gap will, will be made up for in terms of all the money. Like yeah. so, like uh, my view is that why is NATO important? NATO is important because of Article 5. The mm -hmm. U.S. is treaty-bound to defend any NATO member from an invasion. Mm -hmm. Everything else is conversation. Like, in my view, is NATO could be halved, mm -hmm. and there wouldn't be a, a, a functional distinction. Now, uh, people who don't have that view would say that means Ukraine is doomed. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ukraine is not a NATO. And so for the, for, for the NATO parties, it is the U.S. guarantor. That's it. Um, in terms of like who could who could make up some of the gap in in my uh, truncated NATO in terms of the financing, um, I mean, clearly the Germans, clearly the French, clearly the Italians. Hmm. Are you are are you concerned about um, like play it out for me uh, a Biden re-election and what this means for NATO and what this means for Ukraine funding and or you know the war effort there versus a Trump election? Like play it out for me in the shortest possible version. God, isn't it, isn't it crazy? The Biden re-election somehow feels like less fathomable than the Trump re-election. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it, it feels weirder, right? Like it just, it's like, what, what, we, what are we going to do? <laughs> like, um, but I, I think uh, if Biden is re-elected, I think it's possible that, as mentioned, the Democrats will take the House. I think the Republicans are going to take the Senate, um, mm -hmm. uh, potentially by a lot, actually. Um, uh, uh, who knows? They have a, quite a track record of not delivering on that. But um, and I think it, they'll take it as this, you know, grand moral vindication. And I think that the, the, they'll get another eight package through. And um, mm -hmm. but who knows? That also assumes that, that that my armistice doesn't happen and doesn't keep. Yeah. So. But then what about the Trump like alternate reality? What about oh, that? I mean, events? I mean, I complete game changer. I mean, I think, uh, I don't think it's like Trump is going to sit down and just give Ukraine away. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I think you have seen consistently that the Trump is more hawkish than, than people in the panic mode. 
uh, thought he would be. Um, but I think, I mean, you could look, my basic view is like this stuff is intractable without either a de facto or de jure recognition that Russia is going to have control of parts of Ukraine. Like, like we, like Russia has been in charge of Crimea for a decade. And so much of the discussion of this, we are tongue tied on because we have to pretend like the Ukrainians are going to retake it. Um, and so a president that doesn't really care about those niceties um, actually could go a long way to, to, to brokering peace. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our new show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe to Reason TV's YouTube channel to get notified when that happens or to the Just Asking Questions podcast on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcatcher. See you next week.